So as is the usual practice, we would start with um, introduction. My name is Ruki and I'm the CEO of Ruki White Careers. And I would like to meet you guys as well. Right, so we're going to be using the chat box a lot to make the session very interactive. So I'd like to meet you guys as well. The name, where you're joining from, right, and um, what you do currently, right, to give us a background, because we're here to learn about compliance today and the prospects that the career path has for us. Right, so it would be good to have an understanding of where we are joining from and what we do currently. So we can give relatable examples. Right, please let's give the introduction coming our names, you know, where in the world we're joining from. Right, so I've got Ace from London Senior Test Analysts. Nice to have you, Ace. Please let's keep the introduction coming. Like I said, let's drop the link with our friends, our communities, you know, our family. It'll be a very, very interactive session. So don't let's, we shouldn't let them miss it at all. <laughs> Okay, so I've got Uche from Middlesbrough. I've got Bill K Billy Case, Nigeria qualified lawyer, joining from Coventry. Nice to meet you, Bill K Billy Case. Nice to meet you, Uche. I've got Jasmine from Malaysia, in-house corporate legal counsel. Wow, all the way from Malaysia. Thank you, Jasmine, from for joining us today. Naza from Newcastle Banking Associates. Nice to meet you and welcome, Naza. I've got Bemi from London, Nigerian trained lawyer. I just completed my LLM. Wow, well done to you. Welcome, Bemi. I've got a meetup from Peterborough. Audit compliance and internal control experience from Nigeria. Nice, nice one. Well, interesting combination of people here. Please, please, let's keep the introduction coming. I'm not sure I'm, I've read up to five to six, and I see you know more than 20 people in the house. Let's keep the intro coming. So we're going to do this for another one, two minutes, right? And then we would get started. For those just joining, we're introducing ourselves in the chat box, our names, our city, and what we do currently. Or what our background is, whichever one that best describes us. Okay, I've got Osage, Scotland finance analyst. Got lots of professionals in the house, so from um, internal control professionals, finance analysts, lawyers. Nigeria qualified lawyer, he now scopes legal counsel, senior test analysts. Mm -hmm. Abiola Aja, legal practitioner and aspiring compliance and risk analyst from Nottingham. Welcome, welcome, Abiola. I think it's 2 10, so we can get right into it. If you are yet to introduce yourself, please feel free to continue to introduce yourself in the chat box. Okay. Okay. Let me go back to my screen now. Can you guys see um, UK Compliance Bootcamp? 
career masterclass trying to share the full screen yes thank you thank you full screen mode Hey. So today is all about, you know, compliance, all about KYC, AML and related, you know, um, stories. So um, to start again with introduction, I'm the founder and CEO of RQI Careers. RQI Careers is a dynamic UK tech company that helps people to transition you know, to their desired career path and help them to land their desired jobs in the UK and global job markets. Right in the last 12 months, we boast of over 1,000 plus you know, success stories of people that you know, engaged our services, enrolled in our boot camps and landed their desired jobs, got their desired promotions. These jobs include remote jobs, even from Africa, even um, visa sponsorship jobs, as well as other types of jobs, you know, based on the client's preferences as well. One thing that we are very much known for is our very, very interesting success stories, which you go through our page on Instagram, you know, you'll be amazed at how much people trust us and through their trust in us, they've been actually able to land, you know, their success stories from our program. Right. So our trainings include, you know, data analysis and business intelligence, projects management, business analysis, Scrum Master Product Owner, a Product Manager, Microsoft Excel and PowerPoints, and of course, compliance and KYC, which we are here to hear about today. Our staff services also include CV optimization, LinkedIn optimization, career advisory and consultation, interview preparation, you know, professional portfolio. These are offered as well as standalone as well. So today we are here to learn about compliance because I'm sure we've all had you know, compliance before. Like I said, we're going to try to make, you know, the session as interactive as possible. Forgive the fact that I'm not as probably loud as I used to be. I used to be um, actually um, under the weather a bit, you know, but as usual, you have to pick yourself up and, you know, show up as they used to say. So I'm going to ask a question. What does compliance mean to you? The fact that we are all from different backgrounds and diverse, you know, experience would, you know, make it mean that, right, compliance would mean different things to us. And I would want you in one word or in two, I mean, in a phrase or something, tell me what does compliance mean to you or what do you understand compliance as? We're going to be using the chat box, like I said, a lot. You know, I'm going to be reading out responses. Please try to, you know, make it, you know, respond to my questions as much as, you know, so that we can, you know, I can also feel encouraged and we can move faster. So who is going first? What does compliance? But I hope, I hope you guys can still hear me clearly, though, despite the fact that, you know. Right. I think I already have a testament to the fact that you guys can hear me. Ayodeji says it means keeping up with rules and regulations. Thank you for that perspective. Is there anybody else sharing their perspective of what compliance means to them? What does compliance mean to you? Because I think my background is making it dark. Can you guys see me clearly now? Or more clearly? Right. Tammy says adherence and obedience to lay down policies and directives. Thank you. Osage says adherence to regulations and policies. Joy says following laid down rules and directives. Fantastic. We are all like, you know, we are all hitting the nail on the head and, you know, we are all using similar terminologies. 
as well. Ogechi says, being obedient to laws and policies guiding an organization or society. Fantastic. Blessing says, it means examining and evaluating. Thank you for the unique perspective as well. You know, I think we've all been fantastic. We've all been fantastic. So what is compliance, right? We've, we are all right, you know. Compliance is an essential part, you know, of any organization, of any society. Like they used to say, first of all, when there's no sin, there's no law. When there's now, I mean, when there's no law, sorry, there's no sin, right? I'm not twisting it. Yeah, when there's no law, there's no sin. But when there's law and there's no enforcement, right? And, I mean, it's still useless, right? And how do you ensure enforcement? By monitoring, by monitoring compliance, right? So compliance, you know, is involves ensuring that, you know, Regulations are being met, you know, ethical standards, industry standards, societal standards and laws and regulations are being met. Right. And the thing is, compliance is a field that cuts across a wide range of industries. You know, for every industry that is regulated, there definitely must be compliance to those regulations that guide those industries. And what that means is that there would always be a need or a demand for compliance professionals because of this. Because the thing is that laws are ever changing. Regulations, you know, do not, are not static, right? Regulations change, you know, just as business needs, societal needs changes as well, you know. So based on occurrence, if maybe there are occurrence or activities this year, right? This, with, this, you know, will be reviewed and added to whatever it is, you know, that's are the regulations that guide, you know, the country or society or industry as well. Right. So it covers a wide range, you know, of areas such as financial regulations. We've got financial regulations, almost, not even almost, all financial institutions are regulated, highly regulated, of course, because they deal with, you know, people's money that have to be kept secured, you know, the way they use it, how they keep it, where they invest it, they are all, and where the, those funds also come from, right, are all regulated for obvious reasons. We have anti-money laundry as well. You know, which means that you know people can actually either be financing terrorism, that's a um, CFT, right, or be sourcing funds from illegal, illegal um, sources and want to hide them. Of course, you know, hide them, you know, in the financial system okay. as well. We've got GDPR as well, which is to protect you know, protect each and every one of us, right, as data owners, right, and and a lot more. So there are different I'm ways. Not in going to Please let's meet yourself. Trish, please meet yourself. Thank you. So what are the essentials, right, for compliance field, right? So as an individual that wants to transition or that wants to explore a career path in compliance, it's very important that you have industry knowledge, right? Say for instance, now, if you want to, you know, get compliance related role in the banking industry, then you need to understand what are the laws that guide that industry, because you need to even know those laws, right? To know what you're actually ensuring compliance on to know what you know you are monitoring to know what's you know so you need to have that knowledge right so you can't just wake up and say oh i love compliance i love to do things right and because of that i'm qualified to be a compliance professional so whatever industry you are going into you know you need to ensure you need to have background knowledge of that industry that will give you an advantage as well you know in the job market so for instance now we've had a lot of people you know that's have landed jobs in banking, you know, compliance analysts, KYC analysts, aiming analysts within the banking industry. Same way, we also have a lot of people that have, you know, landed jobs in law firms. Some of these people, you know, they've been able to do this because probably they have previous law background in another country, 
right? And by the time they add, you know, the UK compliance bootcamp to this, you know, they have the advantage, you know, to get UK based, you know, compliance related rules. You need to actually also have understanding of, you know, the regulatory framework, the UK regulatory framework, right? You need to familiarize yourself with the specific regulatory bodies and agencies relevant to your field. You know, this might include, you know, the FCA, GMLSG, OFAC, ICO, and the likes, right? You need to also continue to learn and, you know, imbibe continuous developments. If you want to be in the class, you know, in space, then you have to be someone that's, you know, would love to read because the laws, like I said, are ever changing, right? You must always keep abreast of the latest, you know, latest um, regulations, you know, even not even regulations as well, incidents as well. For say, for instance, in your industry, a particular bank or something has been fined, you know, because of um data protection infringement, or they've been fined because of KYC related, you know. So you have to actually be continuously aware of you know whatever is going on in your industry. And you also have to stay abreast of, you know, your competencies as well. Data protection and privacy measures as well. You know, you need to be compliant with data protection regulations, right? And much more. So what are some, what are those skills, right, that are needed in the compliance field? As someone who has an interest in compliance, I would say that, I would say 80%, right, of maybe what you need, right, you know, you already have them, probably because you're coming from a previous background, you're already a professional, right? And, you know, yeah. So I would say as a compliance professional, you need to, you know, you need to be able to assess risk. You need to be able to tell, you know, based on, you know, risk frameworks, whether something is high risk, low risk, you know, all this you will learn, you know, within the bootcamp, right? Documentation and record keeping. You need to keep records. You need to like be very, very, you need to be very um, organized, you know, keep record, you know, document, document your relation, your conversations with clients, you know, documents, whatever it is you've obtained from clients as well needs to be well kept such that, you know, when it's requested for as well, you know, you can, you know, and it's over to the regulatory bodies that might request for it. You need to be conversant with GDPR, data protection. You need to have continuous improvement culture. You know, you need to have knowledge of financial staff sanctions. You need to be analytical. You know, you need to understand KYC, AML, you know, the legal or the whatever industry you are trying to look into, right? If it's health and care, for I mean, if it's health and care, for instance, if you go to the NHS website now, if you search for compliance, you see compliance related. You see a lot of jobs on compliance as well. However, you need to be able to talk confidently about, you know, knowing who regulates them. You know, you have to, you know, talk confidently about, you know, the regulations that also guide them as well. Right. Stakeholder management. There are lots of soft skills like as well, like stakeholder management, because as a compliance professional or KYC professional or AML professional, you have to interact with, you know, clients sometimes. You have to interact with your colleagues, right? You need to have very good stakeholder management, interpersonal relationship. You need to have very good interpersonal relationship skills, communication skills, right? You need to you know, have very good communication skills as well. Right, so what are the potential career paths that one can explore in compliance? Not limited to this, we have, you know, we have um, KYC analysts, we have compliance analysts, right? You can see the role, the, this, I think this is according to read, right? Um, you can see, you can be a compliance manager, KYC manager, risk manager, you can be an analyst, financial crime analyst, sanctions officer, sanctions analyst, AML analyst, data protection analyst. And for a fact, in this um, particular bootcamp, right, we've had, you know, our students, you know, um, go into the field and, you know, land very diverse, unique roles. You know, like yesterday, I think it was, um, one of our students, or was it early this morning, she shared a success story of landing 
a job as an AML control analyst, right, with a law firm, right? And I think last week it was compliance monitoring and as analysts, I think I've already posted that, right, as well. We've got people and clients onboarding analysts, you know, clients due diligence specialists, business risk assessments um, analysts, com central compliance analysts, KYC analysts, quality control analysts, KYC quality control analysts, you know, finance, senior finance advisor in some banks, you know, clients um, advisor, you know, just to name a few for the, for the top of my head. And you can see how different these roles are, you know, just from, you know, taking this bootcamp, right, they're able to position themselves and land, you know, jobs in these roles. Why should you now pursue a career in compliance? Right. Uh, there are so many reasons why compliance is a very good career path to consider and why, you know, you're being in this meeting today and considering a career path in compliance, you know, I mean, why you are in the right place, right? And why you should actually follow up with, you know, your goals or your uh, consideration of becoming a compliance professional. The first one is that compliance professionals are very much high in demand. And this is because, you know, it's not a role that is going to go extinct anytime soon. It's not a role that changes as a result of disruptions or whatever. There will always be regulations as long as there are regulations, so long as there are changes in regulations that needs to be studied and that needs to be, you know, adapted into business. They will always need, you know, compliance professionals. Banks will always onboard new clients because we will continue to open accounts with banks. So long as banks keep up, I mean, so long as banks continue to exist and we are not having to dig the floor to, you know, dump our money in it. So long as this continues to happen, you know, we will continue to need KYC and AML analysts. People will continue to buy properties and when we buy properties, we are going to continue to use solicitors, conveyance companies and all that. So long as we continue to do this as well, solicitors and conveyance companies or property companies will continue to need AML analysts, KYC analysts, to actually know their customers. Because the thing is, if you are dealing with any transaction that needs to do with exchange of money, you know, mm -hmm. or anything that has to do with money, like cash, right? Exchange of money, you know, then they need to verify the source of that money. The source of that funds, the source of the wealth needs to be verified. And so long as this need is there, they will always need, there will always be a need for KYC and AML analysts, right? Even if you look at other industries, we have we've had our students also learn jobs in um, councils and boroughs. That's um, the um, government's uh, departments, right? As compliance professionals, so the demand is there, right? You only just need to like equip yourself with the skills needed to land the job. Another thing that is guaranteed in this field is career stability. You know, it's not one of those roles that, oh, it's getting extinct, or oh, there's a new technology that's come out and, you know, because of that technology, they are no longer using compliance. It's now AI that is doing the compliance now. Or is now this particular tool that is doing the compliance. It's now this to all you know, compliance are no longer required. Government does not need compliance anymore. Right. So that's not going to be the case. And you know, stability is there. Even if you know today you are if today you are in the finance industry, if you want to change industry, you can decide, you know what, um, you know, getting into the law firm. I'm actually, you know, going um going into into tech as well, fintech companies, payments companies, all these companies that are springing up today, they all need, you know, compliance professionals. Diverse career opportunities, I've said that also earlier that, you know, you can work across industries, finance, fintech, tech, healthcare, environmental, <laughs> data protection, and, you know, and the likes, right? So global relevance as well. Right. So the skills gained, you know, and the experience gotten in the compliance field, right, is relevant across countries 
and you know, across countries and across borders. Can you guys still hear me? Please let's mute ourselves. Yes. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. So professional growth. You know, the good thing about the compliance industry as well is that, you know, it's not a, an industry that you get in and then as soon as you get in, you've gotten to the peak of your career. So even if you are getting in at whatever level, there's a very there's a, um, there's a very wide and you know there's a wide opportunity for growth. You know, you can get into there as a KYC analyst. After that, you can become a KYC manager, you can become a compliance manager, you can become the head of risk, you can become a risk manager, you can become you know, I mean, there's a wide range of opportunity for progression within the same career path, right? Right, so, um, yeah, the global regulatory trend. So the good thing about actually becoming a UK compliance professional is that, you know, the regulations that guide, right, most of the developed countries are actually international standards, you know, that cuts across, you know, a wide range, even if it's not exactly the same, they mirror each other, right? They mirror each other because, you know, the world is being, the world is a small place now, and, you know, most of the regulations are aligned, you know, to each other. So, okay, so, now I'm going to be introducing you to the RQI Careers Compliance Bootcamp because we've talked now a lot about, you know, the career prospects of the role. But before I go on, and I have another small activity for us, you know, I know that we are all here for probably different, you know, we have different roles that which, what would you say in compliance or in compliance is your own you know, interest, what's field in compliance would you like to get a job in? We can, let, so let's drop, you know, the next title of job you want to get based on area of compliance that interests us in the comment section as well. So I'd like to read this. I, I'm, I know we have somebody here from tests already. We have somebody here that is internal control, but I'm sure that there's still something more that you're looking for. So what is that field that you would like your next job title to, to be? Thank you very much. So I've got Morito. Morito says data privacy protection analyst. Thanks for that. Joyce says KYC AML analyst. Thanks for that. Ogechi says KYC AML analyst. Morito says information governance officer slash manager. Jasmine says risk analyst, AML analyst. Fantastic. Compliance manager. Governance manager from here, ma'am. Hey, please let's keep it coming. Let's contribute. We've got over 30 people in the meeting now. Let's make it lively. Risk assessment prevention slash prevention analyst. Thank you, Mary Jane. Charity says KYC. Fantastic. So Gracious says quality compliance slash performance improvements manager, health care. Fantastic, I love that. Dubs says KYC CDD analyst. Fantastic, and Ogeneke says compliance manager, risk manager. Fantastic. Well, you know one good thing, one good thing I have to say to you today, you are all in the right place. Right, so Ulua Damilare says KYC analyst, compliance manager. Thank you for contributing to that activity. So now we're going to proceed. But before I proceed, I'm going to tell you that you are in the right place, right? So um, now I'm going to tell you about how we can help you achieve that your goal of your next, you know, role in compliance, right? So the RKY Careers Compliance Bootcamp is a five weeks bootcamp, right? That helps you to not only gain, you know, theoretical knowledge about the UK regulatory framework, the global regulatory framework, but also helps you to gain practical work experience because all our bootcamps, right, are practical experience focused. Practical, exper practical work experience, right, to thrive at interviews and also to be able to roll your sleeves from day one and do the job. 
Right. So you just don't learn the theory only. You actually get to solve cases, you know, get to work on projects as compliance professionals, even from within the bootcamp. So what are the perks of our bootcamp? Like I said, it's a five weeks training that involves, you know, the virtual life experience, the real life scenarios that you get to work on, you also get to enjoy interview preparation and the interview preparation you get to enjoy is not just, you know, a one off exercise anymore. We now have, you know, interview prep sessions every fortnight as well within this bootcamp, within, you know, the alumni community. So what that means is that, you know, even after the bootcamp, when you land, you know, those interviews, you can always come back to join. I mean, there's a drop-in session where you can come and bring your job description. Let's review it. Let's try to predict questions that can come out of it, right? And let's guide you towards success, right? So the support does not end just at the end of the five weeks, right? You get you continue to get post bootcamp support as well. You know after the bootcamp. Also, we've got our monthly career webinar as well. You know this is a session that we have once a month, mostly at the end of, because the thing is here, we are a family, we are a community. We don't just, oh, take your money, train you, and that's it. We want to know how is it going in the market? What are you, what are the issues or challenges you are facing? And also based on pain points, you know, that we know mm -hmm. that people in our community are experiencing, we bring experts from time to time to come and, you know, address us share industry insights, what's latest, what's new, where are the new opportunities, you know, we get that. I mean, in the last one, we brought an immigration expert and, you know, consultant to come talk to our students about, you know, the changing, you know, UK immigration policies and how it can, how they can, you know, benefit from it. To be honest, it was a fantastic session where everybody actually got, you know, an opportunity to get answers to their questions, which they would have actually paid for, paid a consultation for, you know, if we didn't do that. Sometimes we bring, I mean, previous sessions as well, we've brought people to come teach us how to get jobs in the NHS, which a lot of people have testified, you know, helped them to actually land their NHS jobs after that. Civil service as well, and other industries that we identified that, you know, are actually recruiting or actually sponsoring people's visa. We bring people in to come and guide us. So it's not just limited to that. Whatever it is, like I said, that we feel that will be an extra source of support for our alumni community. We do not hold back at offering this to them, even you know when they come at extra costs to us. We we do not you know hold back. Also within the bootcamp, we do your CV and LinkedIn optimization for you based on your newly acquired skills from us as well as your previous experience. We make this, you know, reflect transferable skills in the new career path you're trying to explore to give you an advantage and to land you the interviews. Because if you don't even land the interviews, right, how would you be able to even demonstrate skills that you have learned? Right. So that's one of our unique advantage, right? You get to work on case studies, like we said, you get a certificate of completion. You know, we are CP, we are a CPD UK accredited learning provider, right? We are also listed on the UK government's website as a UK training provider. That's to give you, conf I mean, that's to, you know, give you that assurance that, you know, we are not just, you, this is not just a side or or somebody that just woke up one day and said, you know what? Let's start training people. You know, we actually got all the necessary accreditations and assessments of our training methods, of our materials, you know, and they were certified to be of standard. Right. So we also have our learning management system, which is, you know, the platform where all the recordings of the classes are uploaded to. You also get access to previous resources for interview preparation, as well as other useful resources as well there. So for those that might actually be working or that, you know, maybe are in class, they missed class or something, you can always go back and you get access to this for up to 12 months. This, this um, platform as well has been very useful because even people after they land jobs, you know, testify to the fact that they go back to this to go refresh their learnings and, you know, it helps 
them as well. Like I said, you get post bootcamp support, you work on projects and all. So like I said, our bootcamp is designed, you know, with you in mind, it's designed to get you job ready and it's designed with support, you know, as the as the first and you know most important thing that we know that you need. So who can take this course? Right. So on this course, right, it's not limited to only some type of career. It's not limited, right? Early career beginners, you don't have any work experience at all. This is a good one for you. You are a foreign trained lawyer and ex-banker. Oh, we have a lot of you here, right? Even our esteemed facilitator is a foreign, is a dual trained, right? So we have a lot of people too as well that are already qualified in the UK that would still come and say, I'm qualified already. I'm even practicing. I have my own practice. But you know what? I mean, we can't be waiting for customers all the time before we eat, right? We need to have that skills that we can use outside of this law practice, right? That would bring food to the table. Let's be able to get contract jobs here and there as well. You know, in KYC or in AML, we've had a lot of people like that as well. And we have people that, you know what, well, I'm foreign trained. I know that I don't want to become qualified here, but I don't want to go so far from now as well. I still want to do something that I want my brain to work the way it was working when I was a lawyer. You know, this is a good one for you. You can, I mean, we have people that are already qualified that will still come back to say that, you know what, well, I mean, it's not easy out there. I would rather be in the compliance space. Also, if you're an ex-banker, either as a teller, customer service professional, or even relationship manager, account officer, you are, you know, more than, you know, you are more than, um, I mean, this is a very good one for you as well, right? And if you are not an ex-banker, you are not a foreign trained lawyer, but you want to, you know, get into compliance, you want to find, you want to start a career in banking, mm -hmm or you want to start a career in any of the industries we've mentioned earlier as well, you know, this is definitely the one for you. So anyone at all seeking a career in compliance or KYC, or you want to just, you know, be, you want to be aware of, you know, compliance regulations and all that for your own business as well, you are not left out. You are not left out as well. So, what are the competencies you will gain within the bootcamp, right? Within the bootcamp, you will get very comprehensive knowledge of the regulatory framework. You would learn KYC and AML. You will learn data protection and privacy. You will learn GDPR, financial sanctions, and then you would also learn risk assessment and mitigation as well. So what are the roles that you can possibly apply to after the bootcamp? It's not limited because to be honest, every day I keep getting new roles I never even knew that, you know, because the thing is that we are all unique, right? You're learning, you have a background, which is unique. You're adding this to it to form a unit. So you'll be surprised at the roles you will attract. You see some recruiters reaching out to you. You might actually get a rec recruiter reach out to you for a business analyst role now within the compliance space because probably you had business analyst related experience and then you have this as well. You know, so we've had people land, you know, AML compliance risk. KYC, you know, regulatory affairs specialist, compliance risk manager, business compliance analyst, K K KYC, quality control analyst, AML investigator, you know, AML control analyst, and, you know, not limited to that, data protection officer and analyst, right? So for those that always ask questions about visa sponsorship, right? I'm sure a lot of noise is going on out there about visa sponsorship. However, the last time we checked the government's website, you know, compliance is still listed as part of, you know, the field that can sponsor, you know, it's now like up, up to now getting companies that are willing to sponsor, right? However, if you get a company that's willing to sponsor, you either as a compliance officer or compliance manager, you know, the roles are on the UK skilled worker visa as we speak. Right, so here are a couple of success stories that are related to compliance that we've gotten from the bootcamp. So like I said, you've seen someone get a compliance analyst through after the ROKY compliance bootcamp, compliance monitoring analyst, compliance analyst, CDD and conflicts analyst, compliance, two islanded, two compliance roles, compliance assistant with a bureau, 
Council in UK, landed a compliance analyst role in London, KYC analyst role in London. So those are just a few because we can't actually put all of them here. You know, so we have another list of, you know, roles people have gotten as well, transaction monitoring, central compliance and the likes. So based on everything I've said, right, what is the value of the training you know, from the virtual classes, which is live and expert led, not just recordings. You know, a lot of those trainings that would take your money and then when it's time for class, we'd say, we'll send you recordings to go and watch, right? And tell you that when you have questions, you know, you can, you can call us or something. Because I hear a lot of things that happen out there on the streets. But anyways, um, classes are live expert led. Right, you get access to our LMS, you get a certificate of completion, get pro get to work on projects, you know, which will be verified through a work reference when you get a job, interview prep, you know, you get to become a member of our new alumni community as well. Based on all this, the value of this bootcamp should be nothing less than one thousand five hundred pounds, right? However, right, um because we understand that, you know, it's, it's not all about money, right? We are running a special offer, you know, uh, we're running a special offer right, right now that allows you to pay just £5.99 for this. And you can pay it in two installments, right? Which is 50% now and balance by March ending. So we have this on the screen because I think we started taking enrollments since January. So if, for people that are already paid in January, they were able to pay in three installments. But if you're paying now, you can only pay in two installments. And that's because it's just a five weeks training. The first quarter starts March 23rd. And before April ending, the classes would already be over. Right, so if you're also joining from Nigeria, I want to find out, you know, what's the discounted amount or what's the rates for Nigerians that want to pay in Naira. Please send the what send a message to the WhatsApp numbers listed underneath. Admin, please share the payment link as well for people to secure their slots today because, you know, um, we get sold out pretty fast. And once we do, because we like to keep this class, you know, a small class. Once we do, we will no longer take enrollments. So I believe that with everything you have heard, right, I'm sure that, you know, all your questions and doubts about, you know, whether compliance is a career path to explore has been answered. However, if it has not, please drop questions in the chat box. I'm happy to answer your questions. So while we are trying to secure our slots, Right, I'm going to introduce you to the very, very special person that will be facilitating and, you know, training us on the bootcamp. As you can see, we didn't just bring anybody, you know, on board to train. Our trainers are, you know, qualified, certified, experienced, you know, as you can see. So we've got Olumide. Olumide is a uh, popularly known as Lumi. So in most of our success stories, you see Thanks to Lumi, thanks to Lumi. Oh, for all of you that have been wondering, who is this Lumi? You get to meet Lumi today briefly, you know, and then if you want to enjoy more of Lumi and RKY, then, you know, let's meet at the other side, right? So you can see is you know, certified here and there, is an ICA certified member, you know, is, I mean, is well and overqualified, right, to help you become a compliance professional. So I'll let Lumi, you know, I'm sure he has one or two things to tell us today. Lumi, okay. Um, Lumi, please, um, yeah. we want to hear from you. Okay, thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, CEO. So I'm, I'm Lumi, I'm the facilitator for the compliance program. And um, if we, if you guys agree to join us on this journey, then we'll meet on the other side. So it's um it's a very interesting journey. Um, I can tell you about my experience, how I got here, and um, how um how I broke into compliance. Hopefully, that will help to motivate you guys. So um, quite interesting journey I also have. Um, just like most of you are planning to do or have already done. 
um, we call it Japa. Uh, so I, I migrated and I wanted to have a career in compliance. So I think it was quite difficult initially. Um, it wasn't as structured as organized as it was now, because now we have a lot of um, compliance training all over the place, but there weren't a lot of such programs then. You didn't really have that kind of support um, options to join this program or select this course and all that. So we didn't really have a lot, you know. And uh, coming from a professional background, I was like, OK, I've had all this experience. I just felt, OK, I should be able to get I should be able to get something. I should be able to get a job and, you know, start something, you know, and all that. But what I noticed was that most people just end up in, you know, blue collar jobs whereby you might you struggle to even meet your bills and all that. and it's um i don't know it's quite um it's not what you expect and it's not something that you can easily change like that that so um you know so i made that move that no i'm going to end up in the compliance rule and all that so i read read a lot of stuff about compliance and all that but i found out i was reading the wrong stuff when i became a compliance um, officer and all that so the reason why I'm saying all this is to give you a little bit about my story, how I wandered off the right path, and then I, you know, one way or the other, found myself back into compliance through the long way. And the difference now is that you're going to have a, a shorter way by having a, going through a compliance program whereby, you know, all the mistakes, all the values, all the lessons, all the principles are discussed and that will give you an intro to what do you want to do and this is what it's really going to be like so at rky our plan is to make sure that we hold your hands and show you exactly what you need to know um at least to get a job and also to be able to excel um, it now depends on how hungry you are uh, because of course we can show you everything and you might decide oh i'm not going to read this i'm not going to do my project and all that so our job is just to guide you and to point you in the right direction that look, this is what you need to read and all that. So I'm convinced that you guys already have an idea of what's going on here because, um, you know, you must have a bank account. You must, you know, have encountered some kind of KYC, AML or some sort of uh, compliance or stuff, GDPR or something. So I believe it's not entirely new. It's just that you just don't know. Um, you've already been introduced to it in a funny way, but as a customer. So if you have a bank account, then somebody has done um, KYC on you and they've opened your bank account, you know. So that's what you're supposed to learn now. As I can see that a lot of you are already professionals and you're trying to move into the compliance space. And it's not something that is difficult. And I would say it's totally easy. Um, it's a competition, but you know, the more you read, the more you also comply with your plan. Once you have a plan and your diligence and you're following it, you're disciplined, you will achieve it. So um back to my own story. Um, so I ended up with all these blue collar jobs, and it wasn't really meeting what I wanted to do. You couldn't cover all my bills and all that. And that wasn't where I wanted to, to end up. So finally, you know, I transformed from one job to the other, I learned so many things, you know, and all that. But it didn't help me, you know. But when I started reading compliance stuff, yeah, then I now learned a lot. And some people put me through it. But, you know, I didn't have to go through a program and all that. So sometimes, you know, you 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 apply for these things and you just notice that oh something is happening. Why am I not getting the jobs? Maybe because you don't have the information, and information is key. So once I had that information and everything, I could now break into compliance. And I remember what made me challenge myself was when I went for an interview um, at one of the banks, and they drilled me, and I did. I just found out that oh I know a little bit about stuff, but I didn't know enough to get this job. And they really drilled me. I was like, 
I'm already in compliance. I've been in compliance for a few years now. What's going on and all that? And then I now sat down with them and I asked them, you know, what's happening? You know, this is a different level of interviewing and all that. And that I'd like to know the answers to all these questions that I didn't have a clue about. So they now sat me down. They now gave me another 20 minutes. They were quite nice anyway. And, you know, I was quite happy because I was in an industry where people are willing to educate each other and all that and, you know, to help each other. And we all have one enemy, which is anti-money, uh, which is money laundering and terrorist financing. And by us fighting all those guys, we're also helping ourselves and the society. So I was happy. I was really happy. And they now showed me, oh, this is what you need to learn. This is this and that, you know, and all that. So that now took me a step higher. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm probably here today is because because of those guys and you know they humbled me and I knew okay I know stuff but these guys have now shown me a different level of stuff. There's more than enough stuff. You just need someone to guide you sometimes, you know. And there's actually a lot of stuff on YouTube here and there and everything, but sometimes you just need someone to package everything for you. Um you know, and to guide you through everything, you know. So um, that's all I have to say, to be honest, um, that if you decide this is what I'm going to do, we are going to guide you. Um, and what we are going to show you, we, because we have four modules, we are going to show you what the life of a KYC analyst is, what the life of an AML analyst is, what the life of a GDPR analyst is, and a sanctions analyst. Um, I could give you a quick intro into all of them. So a KYC analyst is like, you know, someone that is like, like, um, how would I say, like a QA analyst, someone that is just checking to make sure that the KYC requirements for each client has been identified. And once you're in the bank, you're not really bringing anything new because they already have their own compliance checklist. And all you are actually doing is just making sure that the people in the front office have complied with it. And when they have complied with it, then that means, you know, everything is all right. But you are now going to now identify if there are any gaps that put your bank in trouble or your financial institution in trouble. Or it could be, um, it could be a, a law firm who needs to comply with compliance regulations in the legal profession. So it just depends. It's encompassing. So you are just checking. Have they complied with the KYC requirements? And if they've not, then you are going to call it out that look, you've missed the list of directors here. You've missed, you know, the list of shareholders here. Where's the shareholder structure? Have you done sanction screening? Have you done this and that? So it's just a comparative analysis. And you are just making sure that you've identified the gaps and you highlight it. That's what you're getting paid to do. And because you know, it's a very, it's high risk, you know. That's why they pay KYC analysts well, because everyone has to make sure that they, their clients perform KYC. So during KYC, you are evaluating your clients to identify the level of risk they pose. And that now means you have to mitigate that risk by you also implementing the right level of due diligence. I'm sure you guys have heard of EDD. So EDD is like enhanced due diligence, and that mostly applies to high risk customers because you have customers, you have to manage them in in um, in relation to the risk based approach, which you know like will guide you, and that's um, chapter four of the GM Energy Part One. Quite an interesting document which will guide you on how to apply the risk based approach. So. Those are the sort of things we'll be teaching you in um, KYC, just not to go too deep. In AML, how to investigate clients, how to identify transactions that are suspicious and how to write your report, what are the things you're looking for, how to escalate to the suspicious, and um, how to write your suspicious activity report that you need to write to different agencies and all that how it should be and the kind of quality that is being expected and all that. So yeah, quite similar to KYC, but from the, an investigative angle, because the common ground is that you are just trying to know these clients. 
to understand if you know whatever they are doing is okay. Because KYC is look your own body and the clients and all that. I am maintaining a relationship. Ongoing monitoring also involves transaction monitoring, and that's part of the regulatory requirements as well. So they go hand in hand, and you know um, having those two helps you to apply for those two areas industries. Um, and then of course we have sanctions, um, which is you know not too far from them. Um, this is focusing on the sanctions aspect and making sure that your bank or institution entity is complying, not violating any of the sanctions. The sanctions penalties are the heaviest, so that's where you you find out that companies are keen to make sure their their sanctions um, defense and sanctions um, department is solid and is up to date. Most of it involves you making sure that you identify what are the latest laws out there. You know, really knowing what to do on, you know, as a sanctions analyst is also important. So you need to understand what are sanctions. You need to understand how do you uh, mitigate the threat of sanctions and how do you train staff regarding how to identify sanctions and just how to uh, make sure you manage the sanctions department so that it's as effective as possible. So those are some of the things we will be going through in sanctions and all that, just to point in the right direction to the websites, the regulators, OFAC, um, and you know, and all that. So, and also GDPR. Okay, and now GDPR now involves you understanding data protection. Um, people have data rights which you are supposed to protect. Because I've seen that someone really um, is keen to become a data protection officer um, during the introduction. So yeah, I guess it's not difficult, but you just need to know that as a data protection officer, these are the things I need to implement. I need to identify the gaps in this company with their data protection. This is the data protection law. Have we complied with everything? And are you also able to draft policies um, and ensure compliance with all these policies? What are the things to watch out for? What are the things that will cost the, um, the firm hefty fines and all that? How can I make sure the, um, the data protection in the company is top notch and all that? So those are the sort of things we'll be covering. Um, in addition to all this, you also have wonderful um, technological support because you know you have a boot camp where all this information each class is being recorded you can watch it sometimes we understand people miss classes maybe they have um you know a party or something or on a saturday and all that and or they need to re-watch something that um you know even if they were present and all that so we have all that you can watch your videos, the materials are online. You can also prepare for your project and also start working on your project. So all that project is supposed to test your competence just to make sure you're in a, um, you know, in a safe environment before you go out there and apply for jobs. There's also support from all angles. Um, you know, um, there's interview Q&A session. We can ask questions. There is mock interview Q&A session whereby you can also be uh, put yourself forward to be tested for your interview. So I think, you know, for me, it's um, I think it's the best package out there. Um, considering the fact that, you know, you get all this, you get five weeks of classes. Um, one of the one of them is an additional one from RKY, just to make sure you get as much. Then twice a month, you also get Q and A sessions just to make sure if there's anything you've forgotten or you just want to catch up with the group or you know just um, network and all that you know you know so you are free to do that. There's a WhatsApp group which enables you to also uh, put in your questions, get a quick answer on whatever. Maybe you have an issue with your um, submitting documents on the project or something you know and all those things. So I think it's a is the best package out there if if I might be biased, but I've seen a lot of um, competitors and I don't think they have, you know, what we've packed here for you. So you get to have the practical knowledge, you get the materials, you have access to the bootcamp, you get um, interview preparation, 
Um, what else do you get? You also get your um, CV and your LinkedIn optimization. And you also get the WhatsApp thing. Um, I think that's a good deal, if you ask me. Um, and you getting it for that price, um, I think it's it's good. Um, our only is to push you to the limits um, to make sure that you are able to compete with the best out there. And I can assure you that, you know, we we'll try our best and, you know, do justice to that. So, um, see you. I believe that should. Thank you so much, Lumi, for, you know, the encouragement and all. Um, yeah, so there you have it, guys. You've met Lumi. So that's the, um, you know, popular Lumi. <laughs> so he shared his own story as well of how he also transitioned into compliance and all that. So, yes, you know, if you still have any questions that we're yet to answer, please respond to them. So um, this is the course schedule you know, for this cohort. Right, so like we said, you know, the offer of £5.99 is still on, but you can pay two installments, one now and balance by March ending. Right, so if you missed this session or if, you just, if you've just joined, you know, just um, search for RQY Careers on YouTube and you can watch the replay, you know, on YouTube when we drop it on Monday. So subscribe so you can be notified before then. So I don't know if we have um, questions. I'll just go to the chat box, you know, to see if we have questions. So um, it says, hey, Ruki, is GRC still part of compliance or is it a different area? So GRC will be governance, risk and compliance. Like we said, compliance is very broad. There's compliance across industries. So we've got... Um, the IT GRC one as well, but I mean that's where we have the ISOs twenty seven thousand, you know twenty seven thousand at thirty two, you know um, nine thousand and thereabouts. So that's not the scope of this particular course, right? So however, we have a course that is coming up, you know, still in plan called IT audits, IT GRC, you know, but we don't know when that is going to start because it's it's a very um yeah it's a very very unique course that needs to be well planned and designed right so but this is not the itgrc one is um based on everything we have said right so i'm excited about this opportunity having watched live presentations of projects by passports can't wait for this course to commence well i want to believe that you know the, the ones you watched is related to the business analysis and um, that's the product demo right for the pmba and smpo boot camps thanks for attending that right so i have zero background in this field hope i am in the right place yes blessing like we said at the start you do not need to have prior experience right in this particular field you know there are lots of transferable skills you already have that's you know makes you unique right and i'm sure that you know you're going to thrive regardless we would provide you with everything you need you know to succeed in your business business thank you very much so I'm currently with the NHSBSA as a customer service advisor. I used to work back home as an admin assistant. Can I transition into compliance with the NHS or any other field without having professional qualifications? I have MSc in strategic management. Okay, so when you say professional, when you say any and any other field without professional qualifications, you know, anyway, I'll just ask that generic generally as well. You know, so I know that um in this space, right, certifications are always good. However, you know, it's not what you always need to get your foot in first. It's always better to gain practical experience and you know, very good knowledge, you know, before when transitioning. And then as career progression or for mm -hmm. career progression, you can always write, you can always um, get certified, you know, especially because even in this, in many roles, there are always a lot of different certification bodies. Some are very expensive and some are not. So, if, I mean, before you invest all that kind of money, 
you know, in certification, it's always good to be sure that, okay, this is really it for me, right? Before you start spending like 7K, I don't know, I, I don't know me used to say that there's a particular certification, I don't know if it's the IC or so, that costs a lot of money. That's for the, um, I think, compliance industry, right? Okay, but we have a couple of them as well. We have ACAMS, we have... um. Um, Lumi, correct me if I'm wrong. I know we have um one that starts with A, and you know, yeah. So, but yes, um, practical work experience, true boot camps, it should be prioritized. Camps, right? Okay. So, please, for the LinkedIn profiling, will you still include the experiences we had before? Definitely. So, we're going to optimize your previous experience in line with you know. I mean, identifying particularly transferable skills that are relevant because across rules, you see that there are some actually, there are some activities or, you know, that you would do across rules, either as a customer service person or as a KYC analyst. There are some things that will be in your day to day that is the same as boots that would, um, you know, that cuts across the different rules. So these are the skills that were there that would, you know, emphasize on, right? even in your previous rules as well. I don't know if that makes sense, tell me. So Joy says it's compliance a tech career. So compliance, you know, I would say it's a tech career or not a tech career, you know, compliance is compliance, but compliance cuts across a wide range of industries. You know, I mean, I know that there are people that are compliance professionals in tech, you know, because, you know, they are working with FinTech, so they're working in banks. Not everybody, that say they are in tech career are actually working as tech professionals. Some of them are just working in tech companies, while some of them are just working on tech related projects, but their own role itself is not a tech role. I don't know if that makes any sense, right? So there are two ways you can be a tech professional, either by working in a tech industry or by actually being a tech professional yourself working in another industry. So, I don't know if there are more questions. Let's keep the questions coming before we call it a day. So please, if you are still sitting on the fence, please ask any question that is the reason why you're sitting on the fence now. Let's answer your question. However, if you're not sitting on the fence, I'm very sure I'll be seeing all 33 of you in class come March 23rd. Right, so the account details have been pasted for those of you that want to secure your slot and are asking for the account details. Right, so the closer we get to the start dates, you know, the um, the less possible it will be to actually pay in installments because we don't want, you know, um, yeah, we don't want to, we don't want people having financial obligations, you know, at the end of the boot camp. Okay, my question is about the grants. Is it what counts for? Is the what counts for the essay fixed? Okay, so we are actually in co um, communication with our um, what's it called, a CRM solution, you know, on solving the problem with the what counts. So as soon as that is solved, we would actually let you know. Okay, so I studied fintech and policy at masters, but the thing is, come Monday. It's, would actually come up with, you know, and if that's not solved, we'll come up with a way to probably upload it, upload the essay, right? So I studied FinTech and policy at master's level with a background in law. What's the option for me to transition to? I think, you know, this, um, a career path in compliance, right, is a good, you know, um, option for you as someone that, so one, the thing is, so for you now, so your unique background, you know, will be, you know, the fintech, your background in law, you know, and then probably your experience from RKY from the bootcamp as well. And then you can probably, you know, attract fintech companies, right? And I, I don't know, I recent, someone recently shared a success story of someone of earning six figures in, you know, fintech as a compliance professional. You know, so the good thing about this field is that there are so many contract rules that can pay you as much as 1000 per day. And that's obviously more than even, you know, that's a lot. You know, if you get a job that is paying you 1,000 per day. And I think another interesting part is that there was this alumni we had from, I don't know, maybe it's five or seven or 6.0. You know, it's still in Nigeria. He wants to come, you know, join his family. 
in the UK. His family are already here, but he took the boot camp proactively to prepare for that journey, right? And I think while still in Nigeria, you know, a very big consulting firm, you know, of course, after I finished the boot camp, updated the CV and put it out there, you know, on job boards, they reached out to him and guess what? They wanted him to do EDD, that's enhanced due diligence. They gave him a contract, right, to do enhanced due diligence on some Nigerian companies that, you know, they want to go into investments with. And guess what? They offered him a thousand per day on this contract. For someone that is in Nigeria, any one thousand pounds per day. I mean, that's a lot, you know, he was really, really happy and grateful for the opportunity to have, you know, learned. Also, we have people also that, you know, they finished the bootcamp and, you know, they, I think they're even in Nigeria, they took the bootcamp and they're able to get remote, you know, jobs in UK companies, in other, I mean, in UK companies that want to employ people remotely from anywhere in the world. So there's no limits to where you can actually, I mean, use the skills you get from the bootcamp as well. And she was saying something about them wanting, you know, someone with up to three years experience, right? She was, she won't, I mean, they wanted someone with up to three years experience and she does not have any other experience to, you know, to call her own apart from what she gained from the boot camp. So this is a good place to be. You know, you are going to equip yourself with not just the skills, but also the experience, you know, to succeed at interviews and to also succeed on the job. Right. I don't know if I answered your question, Esther. Can I pay 300 pounds now and pay the balance before two weeks? into the class okay so i think what we usually do i think the most we can go i think is usually let's just say you know first week in april which will be like two weeks into the class as well or thereabouts. so first week in april will be the deadline for you know payments for the boot camp but anyway when it comes for matters related to installments if you have peculiar or unique situations just enter our dm and have a one-to-one -one chat about your situation and you know we can take it on a case by case basis, right? What if we can meet up with the March courts? When do you think the next court will be? Thank you so much for that question. So we always have a new court every seven weeks. So we have five weeks in class, two weeks break, and then we have another court start. So that would most likely be maybe a beginning of May, I think. You know, that would be beginning of May. That was, that's when the next court will be. So we have a court every, every, for, like every fortnight, like one one week, one month, one month break, another month. Right. So I don't know if that answers your question, Bunisola. What about those that have already sent in their application? So application for what's place? And they didn't have enough space to sell themselves in the essay parts. Oh, okay, you're talking about the grants, the scholarship grants for mothers, right? Well, like I said, if you submitted, your application will be reviewed alongside others. Any chance I could pay in three installments? Like I said, for installments related payments, reach out to us personally. Also, I worked for 11 years with INEC in Nigeria as a legal officer, and I also worked on this side with a, with a property solicitor. I'm currently in on my master's program in sports law in UK. I'm eager to know how CW this will be for me. Lumi, do you want to take this question? Oh, yes, I can. So, um, yeah, I think it's not too far from what you've done or what you are doing because um, legal and compliance are almost hand in hand. Um, transferable skills from legal, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not as difficult as legal anyway, but with the kind of um, support you get, I don't see you having any problem if you decide to transition. It's just that you just need to have that interest in that area. Uh, and if it's something you like to do, then definitely I, I believe you would excel at it, you know, with your background and everything. And even if you don't even have any experience, it just depends on your um interest and a lot of people are interested in trying to help the world to prevent money laundering and terrorist financing so you know it's it's just some things that is a give back to the society okay. you know so it just depends on what you want to do but i think if you want to do it i see nothing that will stop you from being one of the best in it 
Thanks for that, Lumi. To contribute to that as well, having worked with a property solicitor, you know, in Nigeria, one area that you can, you know, trust further skills here is that property solicitors in the UK always, always need KYC and email analysts, right? They always need KYC and email analysts because I made the example earlier. I don't know if you were here, your DG, by saying that, you know, conveyance companies or solicitors, you know, would actually need people that would vest the source of funds because the way property mortgages and all that work in the uk is that you know you don't transfer your money to the seller direct to the buyer to the seller directly right you transfer it to the solicitor the solicitor is the one that now you know um affects the exchange you know so when you want to buy a property when you have your deposits you know before they even say you should transfer your deposits because here it's not about money everything is always about you know protocol standards, what has been set, you know, regulations. So after everything has been met, so the next thing they will do is to confirm your source of funds and earning. You'll be surprised that they go through everything on your statements. You have to explain the deposits in your statements, right? So if you, so, and that's what a KYC analyst will do. It's not the solicitor themselves, you know, that will do this. So most of them will have KYC analysts or compliance analysts. They can call it different names or titles, right? But it's still all the same, these same skills we are saying, right? That would be the one to, like, review the statement. So they will collect the statements of the clients. And if you are not comfortable with what the last six months or three months that is on their stuff is showing, they can request for more they would ask you you know did you get a gift if you get a gift from somebody then they will ask you to get a letter from the person that gave you gifts or even provide the person statement as well you know so you can see how much like investigation goes in into the funds and be, they, this has to be thoroughly done and it can't be done by just anybody it, just the secretary or just an assistant can't do this they need to get a professional compliance professional i mean a compliance professional or kyc to do this right and that's where you would come in and i think that's a way you can translate this to experience working with a property solicitor into life here in the UK because I don't know how it's done in Nigeria but here in the UK right a property solicitor and that, that experience is really valid and will really help you here a lot of our students have actually got some you know jobs with law firms you know so I think it's a very good and transferable experience you know here you know if you put together what you also learn here on the bootcamp you also know the right places as well you know to go to pick up um you know, to pick up, uh, what's it called? To pick up, um, you know, policies or what do you call those things they pick up in GMLS, Lumi, you know, for your own um, competency developments. Right, so talking about your experience in sports law as well, I'm sure that, you know, your experience in sports law, I don't really know much about that. I don't know if you can practice based on your master's in sports law, but I would say that, you know, it, is, it could also be an, it can also be an advantage, you know, to you as well. But I don't know what you need to practice as a lawyer in sports, to be honest. But I know that this your experience combination is very unique and is of value here in the UK. Right. So I studied health science in university and public health in master's. Hopefully I answered your question. I did you. Right. So before I move on to blessing. I studied health science in university and public health in my master. What's the option to transition to? Blessing is up to you. You can transition anywhere, really. You can transition. It has to be based on your interests, right? And what, you know, particularly takes your fancy and, you know, that you are capable to learn, right, also. Right, so um, what time will classes hold? Thank you, I don't, I'm not sure I mentioned that. So the next court starts March 23rd. Classes hold 4 to 6 p.m. on Saturdays. Will it be the same price for the May cohorts? So we are currently running a discount at 599 pounds. Um, hopefully in May as well, the price we may still run the same discount or we may not, you know, there's no guarantee. However, if you want to start securing your slots for May cohorts now, you may be able to tie down, you know, your slots with the same price right now. So if you are paying towards May cohorts, right, you can already start enjoying the three installments. So start paying from this, like this month. So the three installments will start from March, April, and then May. So if you want to pay towards the May cohorts, that's fine. Start paying from 199 now. So hopefully that answered your question. Okay, so I like the aspect of working on KYC AML on properties. This is really helpful. Okay, good to know that it was helpful. Do you provide work reference? So we, like we said, there's a work experience phase of the bootcamp where you get to solve cases, you know, um, as is done in real life. If this is completed, you know, your reference will be verified based on that as well. 
I'm doing data governance model in my sports law, which has data privacy and protection as a core topic. So this would also give me another leeway there. Yes, my first question was appropriately answered. Fantastic. Good to know that you know answered you know most of your questions. Thank you, CEO. Thank you, Lumi. See you on March 23rd. See you as well. And I hope I see every other person here again come March 23rd. It's been a fantastic session, you know, with you all. And you know, you've know you asked very intelligent questions. Thank you, Lumi, as well, for coming. Thank you, each and every one that has you know, made our time as well to be here. I hope I've answered all the questions. I can't wait to see you at the other side, right, where we'll do wonderful things you know, together. And I can't wait to share your success stories as well. So how can we contact you for other services? To contact us on other services, you know, you can, you know, come through the DM on Instagram. You know, we would respond to you. I'm just joining. Please, can I get the slides? You know, for those that are just joining, like we said earlier, go to our YouTube, search for RKY Careers, subscribe, so that when we drop the video on Monday, you will be the first to be notified. All right, guys. Thank you so much, you know, and have a great evening. See you in class.